This video is about implementing in code the eight S boxes of DES. Alright, the topic of this video is the S boxes of the data encryption standard, which is abbreviated DES. And DES is a 64-bit block cipher, which has 16 rounds and a 56-bit key. It's constructed using the Feistel block cipher construction. There are eight S boxes used in DES, and they're usually denoted S1 to up to S8. So to describe them, why do we let BN denote the sequences of bits of length N? So sequences of zeros and ones of length N. And we can equivalently think of bn as just a set of integers from 0 up to 2 to the n minus 1 in base 10. So each s box of des is a function, which, which we denote by si. It goes from b6 to b4. And so there's six input bits, and the function returns four output, output bits. Now, there's no way this function could be a bijection, because these sets have different cardinality. And it'll turn out that this function's onto, but it's not one-to-one. -one. So if we want, we can think of the domain of each function SI to be the set of integers from 0 up to 63, and the range to be the integers from 0 to 15. Now, the natural way to specify any function which has a domain from 0 up to 63 to a range of whatever would just be to list all 64 values that it takes. And each element in that list would be a number between 0 and 15. Now, even though that's the natural way to do it, the S boxes of DES are not specified that way. They have their own way of specifying it. But nevertheless, though, the S boxes of DES are specified with a list of 64 values. But it's just the interpretation of the list that we have to... Uh, think about or talk about. So to find the to find the definitions of the S boxes of DES, we can find them on this Wikipedia page. This is the page where we can find the definitions of the P boxes and S boxes that are used. These are the P boxes here. We're not going to talk about those for this video. Starting here are the S boxes for DES, and that's what we're talking about. So for each, this is S1 and then all the way up to S8. Let's choose S5. The only reason I choose S5 is because down here they give a little example involving S5, and we'll talk about that in a second. Notice in the table for S5 here, the light gray area, that's a list of 64 values, and that is the list of outputs. It's just the interpretation of the outputs that we have to talk about. So let's take a look at this table here that's given for S5, the fifth S box of DES. And the question is, is how do we interpret this to get values? If I give you an input value from 0 to 63, how do we get an output value from 0 to 15? So the way we're going to do it is as follows. Let's say we're given a element of B6, so it's uh, 6 bits. And the first thing we'll do is we'll form a two-bit value by taking the most significant bit, which is B1, and the least significant bit, which is B6. And we get a value B1, B6, which is now a two-bit value, so it's in B2. And so it's an element of the set 0, 1, 2, or 3. And that value is going to be the row of our table. We're counting from 0 here, so if we get R to be 0, that means it's the first row things like that. And R equals 3 would be the fourth row. Then we take also the inner four bits of X. So that would be B2, B3, B4, and B5. And that gives us a four-bit value, an element of B4. And that value is some base 10 integer between 0 and 15. And that determines the column. So with that in mind, let's take a, a look at the value of, let's say, 27. And we want to find out where does the function S5 send 27 to. Now, 
we really could take any value from 0 to 63. Let's just take 27 as an example in base 10. We change that to base 2. It'll have six binary digits, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. Now to form the outer two bits, that would be a 0 and a 1. Those are marked in red there. And 0, 1 in base 2 is just, no surprise, is 1 in base 10. Since we're counting with 0 indexing, R equals 1 really means we look in the second row of that table. Now the inner four bits there are 1, 1, 0, 1 in base 2, and then in base 10, that's 13. So that means we should look in the 14th column. And 1, 1, 0, 1 is marked in blue there. Those are the inner four bits. And so we found that the value S5 of 27 is 9 when we look in the table there. If you want, you can convert that to an element of B4, which is 1001. So in base 10, we could say 27 gets sent to 9 by S5. In base 2, we could say 011011 gets sent to 1001 in base 2 by S5. So there's a little example to get a feeling of how to interpret these tables. But then the question is, how can we implement this in code, right? So let's just think about that. If we're given a six bit value, X, B1 up to B6, and we want to access the most significant bit, which is B1, what we could do is just take X and right shift it by five. When we right shift X by five, all of the bits B2 up to B6 kind of fall off the end on the right, and we're just left with B1. And that's our most significant bit, which we denote by MSB. Then the least significant bit, which is B6, we can access that just by doing X and 1. X and 1 yields B6, right? The way I think about that is 1 is like 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. And when I add those, all those zeros in front of that 1 knock off all the bits from B1 to B5, and we're just left with B6 on the end. And then to form the 2-bit value B1, B6, all we got to do is take the most significant, significant bit, which is MSB, left shift it by one, and then add on the least significant bit, which we XOR on the end. And that gives us the integer between zero and three, which tells us which row of the table we should look at. And how can we write some code to access the inner four bits? Well, why don't we start just by taking X and right shifting it by one spot? to knock off the least significant bit, which is B6. And then we're left with B1 through B5. And we want to get rid of B1, and we can do that by anding it with 1111, which is F in uh, base 16. So the column value can be obtained by right shifting X by one and then anding it with F. And that gives us the integer between zero and 15, which is the column we need to look at. So to find the value of s of x, we need to find the list index associated to x, and we now have a formula for that. It's the row value times 16 plus that column value. And we can implement that now. And here, of course, we're using 16 is because each row of the table has 16 values. So define a little function here called index, and x, the input is a 6-bit integer. So in other words, between 0 and 63. And the index is going to be also an integer between 0 and 63. And it's going to tell us where to look in the list to find the value of s of x. Now, the most significant bit, as we talked about, can just be accessed by right shifting x by 5. Least significant bit, do x and 1. And then to do the row, shift the most significant bit over by 1. And then add on the least significant bit to get a two bit value. And then the column right shift by one to knock off B6, the least significant bit, and then add it by four ones, which is F, to knock off the most significant bit. And now we get a four bit value. To get the index, now we just do row times 16 plus column, as we talked about. So here we go. Here's how we can implement the S box S5 of DES. We have that index function we just talked about. So why don't we call like lowercase s5 to be the list of the integers given in the table there. 
and we'll write capital S5 for the function itself. And then given a value of x, which is 6 bits, which just means it's an integer between 0 and 63, the return value is going to be a 4-bit integer, which means an integer between 0 and 15. And how do we define capital S5 of x? Well, we return lowercase s5 of the index of x. And that'll give the index of x gives the proper location in the table to look in the list. And that'll give the answer. And as we saw, if we do s5 of 27, we should get the number 9 back in base 10. Now, why don't we just implement all the S boxes of DES? There are eight of them. We've talked about the example S5, but we just did that to get an idea of what's going on. So the same idea carries over. We can implement any of them, any of the S boxes SI from one to eight. And really all we need is the list of 64 integers that each one uses to define itself. So if we go to the website, we are at there, the wiki site, and these are the eight lists of integers that we need to define the S boxes S1 through S8. We've talked a bit about S5, but these are all of them. Now we can implement all the S boxes of DS now in a single function. Why don't we call lowercase s just to be a list of the lists S1 up to S8. And then any of these S boxes SI, where I ranges from one to eight, its value at a 6-bit integer x can be given by, well, we first access the correct list by going s i minus 1. Since i goes from 1 to 8 and our indexing goes always from 0, we have to do i minus 1. And then which element of the list do we want of s i minus 1? We don't want the one at x, we want the one at index of x. And that will give us the correct value. And we can test that again with S5 of 27. And we should be getting that value of 9 that we saw before. Now, why don't we think about rewriting these lists in a more natural way? There's no reason why we have to implement these lists in, these, in this fashion. It's done in that way for reasons maybe to expose the inner structure of it more clearly, what's going on in these S boxes. But... If we just want to implement these in code, there's no reason why we have to do it like this. And it might be better just to implement them as lists of the output values from zero to 63. So if we take a, any one of those S boxes SI, we could just calculate SI of zero up to SI of 63 in order like that, and then give that list as the definition of the S box. And that avoids that function index. And that will be a little bit more efficient. Why don't we reorder the list S5 from the way it's given so that the input value used as the index will give the output value. And that's achieved by just ranging I from 0 to 63 and then doing S5 of index of I. And that'll print out the uh, list in the nice order. What do I mean by that is remember how 27 goes to 9? If we look at the 27th index of this new list here, we get nine, and that's much more natural. So we're starting counting at zero. So zero is the element two, one is the element 14. And when you get up to 27, the element's nine. And that way we can get the output value very easily given the input value, we just access it using that index. So if we reorder all the lists that way, it'll look like this now, S1 through S8. The same numbers are in each list, but they've just been reordered so that they can be accessed more naturally given an input value. So now we can implement the S boxes of DES just pretty much like before, but we don't need the index function anymore. We just define S, lowercase s, to be S1 up to S8, a list of lists. And then to define capital S of I comma X, where I is the S box index, and x is the input value, which is 6 bits, which we just do lowercase s of i minus 1 at x. Not at index of x, just at x. And we can test that again by doing s5 of 27, we should get 9. Why don't we just try to implement this in code now and see how it goes. All right, let's open an empty file now and implement the 8s boxes, s1 through s8 of des. 
to start off, let's just define that index function that we talked about. It'll take in a value of x, which is a 6-bit integer, and it'll return the index of the list uh, that we should look at to find the appropriate output value. So we talked about the logic behind that function already, so we won't, I won't repeat that explanation. So we have our function index defined. Then we just want to define all of those lists, S1 through S8, that gives the output values of those S boxes. And then we'll just define a list of lists called lowercase s, which holds S1 through S8. And then as we saw, we'll define capital S of i comma x, where i ranges from 1 to 8, and x is a 6-bit in input value. And then you return lowercase s of i minus 1 at index of x. Let's do a little test. As we saw, s5 should send 27 to 9. So if we call s5 comma 27 and print it out, we should get 9. And we do. So how about now we think about writing the s boxes in a different way, just using the lists as direct lookups. Before we can do that, though, we need to reorder the lists. For an example, to see how to do that, why don't we take S5, the one we've been working with, and let's permute the elements according to that function index. So let's evaluate S5 at index of i, as i ranges from 0 to 63, and form a new list from that. And if we print that off, the list that we get it's also a list of 64 integers but now the ordering is different and the ordering is more friendly now because we can just use it as a direct lookup and why don't we use this idea to print off every one of those lists in the natural order so if we make a little function called print list in natural order and then we print them all off we get the list, all of them now, written out in this nice way. And why don't we just copy and paste those lists into a new file and call those S1 through S8. And then we'll try to implement the S boxes with this way of writing the lists. It'll be a little bit nicer because we won't need that index function. Why don't we just format these lists to have 16 values on four different rows like before. And then as before as well, we'll, we'll define lowercase s to be s1 through s8. And now our s box capital S can just be written without the index function. Capital SI of x is just lowercase s of i minus one at x. And we can test that with, uh, make sure that s5 sends 27 to nine, and it does. This is the other way of implementing these S boxes where we just use the input value as the index of the list, and that avoids the index function. All right, so that ends this video. We've implemented the S boxes of DES in two different ways. One way is using the information that's given in the documents describing DES, the specifications. The other way we wrote it is just with the lists presented in the natural order as direct lookup tables. Thanks for watching.